Yo, what up gamers? It's Sunday morning and I thought, yeah, let's fucking record a tutorial. So I got an email about bevel. Somebody wants to know how do you bevel in a more procedural way that doesn't require the bevel modifier because then there's clamping, right? You can't bevel as much as you want. And then also if I was to show you the procedural method, which of course, you know, spoiler alert, it's gonna be the bevel node. Uh, how do we speed it up? Because this thing is better. However, um, it has to calculate a lot every single frame. So how do we get the speed of the original bevel, but with the the control of that? E either way, uh, let's begin. So uh, open up Blender, uh, the normal kind of bevel, just so we're all on the same page, you dummies. <laughs> um, the normal bevel is you go to edit mode, you select what whichever edges you want to bevel, control B, and then you do this whole thing, right? Uh, you got a bevel. The other alternative, which is somewhat better, and because it's procedural, is you add in the bevel modifier, okay? This lets us control the number of segments, all this, and the nice thing about it is that at any point, we can just modify the mesh. By the way, I got myself a little bit of an update. Whoops. I got myself a fancy mouse, which lets me hit certain buttons uh, without using my little damaged little tinky winky arm. Either way, uh, you can see, we uh, extrude the geometry, we get more bevels, etc. It works. However, there are, you know, of course, the issues of clamping and all this. So at some point, we don't get control once the uh, model's complex. So the solution, you go to the shading workspace. Okay, you already know the beginning of this, most likely. But this is where I'm going to blow your mind. Uh, you want to add in a bevel node. So shift A, bevel. You want to type that in, B-E-V-E-L bevel node. And uh, what this is going to do is it's basically going to modify a normal map. So it's uh, uh, I'm, I'm still not very good with the shortcut. So let's just do it manually. Uh, you see, if we view this, it gives us basically our normal. So the color on this is basically saying the normal of this face is facing this way, the other one's facing that way. Uh, but most importantly, you can see at these edges, you see a bit of purple. Uh, that's basically averaging out the, those two uh, normals next to each other. So it creates this uh, curvature uh, so that when we actually apply this to the normal map, and I believe this is the kind of thing we can only view in cycles, pretty sure, let's view it in cycles. Uh, you can see we actually get a tiny bit of a bevel. So this is without, you can see we just get this crisp edge and then this is with. So if you didn't already know about this, there's a thing called a bevel node. It's fucking awesome. It lets you do procedural bevels without any top uh, topology changes, so we don't actually have to add in more faces. Uh, but again, it's at the expense of uh, some computation time. We can lower it by lowering the samples and all this, but whatever. Um, so some things to know about this, we can control the uh, radius. So you just click and drag. Uh, by the way, this is the kind of thing you don't want it to go uh, too high. So I'm gonna use my uh, shift dragging. There you go. So you can see we can increase the visual uh, bevel. Again, this isn't a real bevel, it's a shader. It's just modifying the normals. Uh, we can up the samples, all this. And again, just like the uh, bevel modifier, and I'll move on in a second, uh, but just like the bevel modifier, you can at any moment just change the geometry. So I'm just gonna inset this and extrude it. And you can see even the, this new section has the uh, new bevel applied, um, which usually you don't want it to be as intense as we're making it. There you go. Now you can see it has a nice bevel. Again, this takes forever to calculate. Why? Because it's taking our normals and averaging uh, them out uh, for this. Okay. Uh, so how do we actually speed up this calculation? Here's the cool part. So uh, once you have your model, whether it be this dumb uh, cube, I this kind of looks like what, what does it look like? It looks some kind of like a plumbing tool, whatever. Once you have your model, whether it be a robot or whatever, and you've applied your uh, bevel modifier, how do we actually speed this up? Well, here's what you do. What we're gonna do is we're actually gonna take this and we can actually bake it into a texture, which is something a lot of people don't think about. This is what I told the guy from the email, okay? Uh, so I'm just gonna switch to GPU. Uh, to bake this into a texture, uh, we bake it just like any other texture, okay? So the first thing we do is since we wanna bake the bevel, we connect it to the surface. So this is what we're viewing. In other words, uh, whatever you see on the model, in this case, is what we wanna bake, okay? So we want this a uh, bevel map, okay? Um, second thing you need to do is you need to add a place for the bake to texture to go to. It's not just going to go like it can't be homeless, right? Uh, so add in an image texture. Uh, this image texture can be a whatever resolution by whatever resolution. I'm going to choose 2048 by 2048. So a 2K texture. Uh, we can also make it 32 bit float, not, ne not entirely necessary. However, uh, if you want the most accurate uh, bevel maps, this is the way to go. So this is kind of like making a 32-bit uh, float EXR. It's more precise. And you, and you normally use this kind of thing for HDRIs, but whatever, can't hurt here. We can call it the bevel map. Oh, I'm so burpy today. I just woke up and I'm like, water, please. <laughs> um, 
Okay, uh, so we have our um, map that we're going to bake to. We have this uh, sent to the surface. Um, and lastly, just select your model. So these are the things you got to make sure you do. Make sure your model selected. Make sure your image texture node selected. And then you can just go to bake uh, for the bake type. You're like, oh, where, where's bevel, right? Uh, don't worry about it. You just click emission. Why is it emission? Because we're sending it directly into it. So it's kind of like glowing with that emission. It, it's a little hard to explain if you haven't messed with nodes much already, but uh, you sent this to emission. We don't need any margin. And by the way, uh, just like any other uh, texture baking, you want to make sure that when your model is complete, it needs to have some kind of UV unwrap. So let's just very quickly give it one. Uh, so this is just how it's going to assign it uh, to the image texture. This is already fine, but you can also make a custom one like, I don't know, smart UV project. It's not entirely important what your map looks like, okay? As long as you have one. Um, so again, model selected, this thing selected, I know I'm taking forever. Uh, once you've done all these things, just hit bake. It's going to take a second. Uh, by the way, if you want your baking to be faster, but maybe uh, less accurate, uh, first of all, you can lower the uh, texture resolution so there's less detail to be added, uh, but also these render, I think just the render samples, you can bring that down as well. And uh, let's see what we got. So here's our bevel map. Uh, so the way you want to think about this is we've baked the bevel into an image texture, this is the image texture and it looks like nonsense. Uh, but one thing you want to notice is that the edge of these face islands, we get like, you know, a change of color, uh, which makes sense because that's where the curvature would be. That's where the bevel would be. Okay. Well, what the fuck am I talking about? Well, now you're going to notice if I take this image texture and connect it, it looks like nothing changed or maybe a tiny little something changed because of this margin. By the way, if you don't want this, you can increase the margin to one or two. And I did exactly that. I just bumped up the margin to, I guess, six pixels, which is bigger than one or two, whatever. I bumped up the margin and I also redid the uh, UV map so that there's a bit more space in between the islands. Either way, um, I basically rebaked this uh, bevel map and you can see, I, at least the point was, you can see this uh, bevel node output is is going to be identical to whatever we get in this image texture. And of course it is because we baked uh, that information into the image texture. Okay. Uh, so what's the big takeaway? The big takeaway is if we were to look at this through a BSDF and we want to add in our bevel. So what do we do? We connect this uh, to the normal, right? Uh, we have this result, which, you know, it works, but it's kind of computationally expensive and, you know, it takes a while. Um, at this point, if we were to just, I'm just going to set up our viewport. If we were to just reconnect this uh, image texture instead of this, I'm just going to swap it out you can see nothing changes. Like it still has the bevel, uh, but now we've done it in an image texture. And by the way, what, what's the advantage of this? Uh, ideally, not ideally, usually uh, image textures are substantially faster to load than something like the bevel node. Why? Uh, because the bevel node is something that needs to be recalculated every single time. Every single time it has to calculate the face normals, uh, average out the curvature in between them, I guess four samples worth of calculation. Um, and what we've done is we've just baked it into an image texture. So the takeaway is uh, once you have a finished model, okay, uh, the issue with this is now that it's not, you know, procedural in the uh, sense that it's a bevel node. If we were to add in more geometry, it's not going to bevel on these new faces. In fact, it breaks them. Uh, but the takeaway is once you have a finished model, you want to have the control of this uh, bevel node that doesn't isn't topolo topologically uh, dependent. So it doesn't do any clamping or anything like that. Uh, but you want the speed, you just bake it into an image texture. And then once you do that, you could connect it to the normal. So a uh, guy who sent me an email, I hope that answered the question. Anyways, uh, thank you for watching the video. What is this uh, list on the right? Is it a list of ways you can bake your texture map? No, it's a list of patrons. Uh, so thank you, patrons. That's why I put you in the credits and also as an advertisement at the end. Uh, people, if you want to join Patreon, there's a link in the description. Why would you? There's exclusive tutorials. I don't post to either channel. I'm doing more this month, ironically, <laughs> uh, even though it's harder to make tutorials, whatever. I'm doing more over there. You can get, also get access uh, to blend files that I upload for certain projects. So hundreds of blend files at this point that you can access that I've uploaded over years. Um, also Discord access, uh, early, uh, what, what do I call it? I call it early access. This is when I upload a tutorial a day or two before. Might do it for this one. Anyways, just wanted to mention Patreon exists uh, and now you know how to bevel without uh, beveling. So, so, oh, come on, you can't do this in edit mode. That's the tra tragedy. I wanna go back to main face cam. How do I do that? Boop. Uh, so, Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.